This thing is so clean, simple, and straightforward, it's even making my job easier. Good afternoon, morning, and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the four piece variety of Wookiee Triple XL. And we have the Fly Like a G6 Minus One in the form of the Samsung Odyssey G5. Bad dad jokes aside, this takes me back, really back in time to like 2009 ish. I think that's when it came out the Samsung P2770H, which I had for an exceptionally long amount of time and then gave it to someone else. And then eventually it died after like 15, 16 years. Can you believe it? Um, LCD panels and stuff with heavy usage would last that long. And this, the reason this takes me back is because it's the exact same formula. It's giving us what we want in a mainstream panel in a very simplified chassis to kind of keep the cost down and focusing instead on the internal components with the monitor being, well, the actual panel being like its best and, and brightest function that it has. Everything else has been simplified and made as rudimentary as possible because when you keep things simple, they tend to work and last a lot longer. So that's exactly what they've done over here with this Odyssey G5. Anywho, let's get into what's in the box. So you obviously get a monitor, you get a little plastic stand with the neck over here, you get its own little display port cable, which I'm very happy about, and it's got the clip-in type, so you're going to have to release that for it to, in, for it to come out, so it's not going to fall out while it is sitting in your monitor. You get your obviously obligatory manuals, and then it has an external power supply. The stand is very simple and basic and straightforward, as is the construction. Looking around the back of the monitor, you're going to see it's just plain, clean black plastic for most of the stuff. There is aluminium inside of here, I would assume, because it is a little bit heavier than normal. It just attaches onto the base and the neck just slots into the back of the monitor. It doesn't obviously then have a periscope in that neck, but it actually does have quite a bit of tilt. So you will be able to get it facing upward towards you if you are a taller person. But I would say that maybe you should look at propping it up, maybe having a desk with a monitor stand that you can actually put it on top of um, to get it more direct online so that the 1000 R curve is then in that perfect sort of portrait mode. A nice little touch on the back over there is also it's got a little cable holder and then you'll see the VESA mount, the 100 by 100 VESA mount up top. So it's got the goods as far as that goes. It, ports as well, very simple. It's just got one HDMI, one display port, a service port for a USB, which I don't think we'll be using at any point in time from what I can see. But it's got a 3.5 mm pass-through jack, which is really, really nice so that you can then just connect your headphones directly into the monitor. If they are a bit shorter, then that's going to give you a lot more distance. And then you can just hook it into that little cable management slot. So it's very simple, straightforward, but what about the performance? So this boasts a one millisecond response time with no MPRT. It does have an MPRT mode, but that backlight flickering and it's very dependent on your frame rate. So if you don't have a higher frame rate, it is going to not really work out, but you don't really need it. This has got the least smear of any VA panel I've used. And that's a really nice thing because the contrast ratios on VAs are much better than IPS. So this finds itself way more in the eSports camp with a VA technology than any other panel I've tested. When I was playing CS and stuff on this, it was absolutely fantastic, the response time from it. There was still some smear. It's just a default that comes with the technology, but it was, like I say, some of the lowest, if not the lowest out of any of the ones I've tested. Something that was a little bit weird is in the OSD, which is very simple and straightforward once again, it's got a bunch of different modes there for color reproduction. And generally the RTS and the cinema one did give me the best out of box performance. It did max out the brightness, which I felt like mm, you didn't really need to do. 85 was very comfortable it being inside and no direct sunlight into the environment. So it, you might need to max it out if you do have a lot of direct sunlight in on your desk or into your uh, working or gaming space. But it was perfect of, with, at 85, honestly and the color reproduction was really, really good. And for like games like Cyberpunk and Audio 2, etc., 
those kind of big open world environment games it's absolutely phenomenal with its 1440p resolution and 165 hertz refresh rate it felt really fluid and dynamic but why i say this a bit weird was when you enable the amd FreeSync premium mode then it disables a whole bunch of the settings on the screen and you can no longer set things like your response time and honestly the response time in the fastest mode with that turned off was better so you are maybe going to be switching between the two depending on the title the stand as well does look like it is quite big right and you're not going to be able to get too close it especially without having any swivel but because it's 27 inches in size you're not going to be sitting right on top of it and it is splayed really far outwards so that it doesn't really extend too far in front of the screen so i don't think that's a esports intimacy position type of monitor for sure but I don't think you're going to be getting this if that's your intent. In general, I would still say if you're looking for like high-end esports gaming, stick to IPS. But if you're in a crossover life and you don't want to pay a premium for IPS technology and still get a really good gaming experience, this is competing for the top spot now with Dell, in my opinion. Like, I think that Dell has a, obviously a bit more feature set with its periscope neck and stuff. But if you're a fan of Samsung and you want something just sleek and clean, then this really should be on your radar. The price point is exceptionally competitive with them as well. You're getting same kind of warranty and stuff like that. So there's nothing uh, inherently performance-wise that you're going to be lacking. The on-screen display is very, very simple and straightforward. And that's just the bullet point for the screen. It's very simple, straightforward with an exceptionally good panel. Like I say, among the VAs that I've tested, this is one of the best, if not the best. I think it's I think it's honestly a, almost like a tie. It's like neck and neck between those two panels. So if you see one on special versus the other, you don't have to worry about the performance. It's only the physical feature set of the monitor that's really going to differ between the two. And that's really good. I'm really happy to see that from Samsung. I assumed that this was going to be a good monitor and I'm very glad to have assumed correctly. Anywho, that's all I have for you on the Samsung Odyssey G5. If you have enjoyed this review, please hit us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side.